good afternoon uh, everyone thank you for uh, joining us uh, today on a very interesting uh, session on uh, how to achieve healthy balance between humans and uh, nature through geospatial technologies so before moving into the webinar uh, i would like to introduce about our uh, company first i am abhay from the marketing department of uh, eds technologies uh, eds technologies was incorporated in 1994 uh, to focus on plm solution sales implementation and support so uh, we are also the bronze partner to sri india uh, through this partnership we provide various uh, uh, js uh, solutions to our uh, customers so we are also one of the largest technology solutions provider in india with more than 1500 customers at any given point of time we have seven offices across india with our headquarters being at bangalore we have a dedicated sales support and marketing and customer satisfaction teams to address our customer business and support requirements before going into the webinar uh, i would like to introduce our speaker for today uh, our speaker for today is mr yogesh karyakarte who is the senior manager for js at eds technologies yogesh has more than 13 years of experience working in various reputed organizations uh, such as central universities research organizations ngos and the private sector He is experienced in using various types of remote sensing, sensing data sets for analyzing and building geo databases. He also assists in writing project proposals, vendor management, collaboration with stakeholders, and reporting to funding agencies. He is the recipient of Nehru Grimson Fellowship Award from the President of Iceland. He is currently leading a team at EDS Technologies, which provide customized solutions for analyzing all types of GIS data sets. for specific requirements so before handing it over to mr yogesh i would like to request all the audience to if they have any questions during the course of the webinar they can put it in the chat box or the question box we shall take it up individually at the end of the session over to you yogesh uh, thank you avin uh as abhi mentioned uh, i am going to talk about uh, remote sensing and gis basics then what is the market potential for the gis industry then the various gis application in ecology environment biodiversity and forestry also i will discuss about some of the isri products the institutes which are in, uh, using isri and some of the demos and case studies Uh, so basically remote sensing is uh, a science where we are actually collecting the information from the uh, various uh, surface of the earth so basically without uh, any uh, direct touch from the object we are getting this information so we are using satellite data aerial photographs and drone data sets for uh, this purpose and we use this data sets to build a geo database uh, so this database may be of various things like for example in case of cities we may have our data regarding the road network the buildings various infrastructure and what are the different uh, resources available in that particular city so we can create this kind of geo database for further analysis and uh, the, there is a lot of scope for the gis in the current market like you can see uh, in 2017 uh, uh, the almost government expenditure was almost uh, 6200 crores and uh, it is predicted that uh, in 2030 it may go up to 31000 crores so it may be increased by five folds so similarly the domestic market investment will also go by five folds and there will be lot of employments uh, in the gis sector and like you can see there may be a 10 times uh, employment opportunities by 2030s compared to 2017 in india and what kind of opportunities will be there so for entry positions they may work as a gis technicians or uh, cartographers then they can work also as a gis analyst lidar analyst and they can work as a higher positions also like a data analyst or gis developers or as a climate scientist or the project management Uh, so there are various applications of gis you can see the in almost all the sectors there is a application of gis uh, civil engineering mining industry archaeology forestry sciences in almost all industries there is a application of gis and gis is uh, used in all the disciplines uh, these are some of the used cases where gis is used for example uh, in case of agriculture for precision farming agro tourism 
for in case of civil engineering for urban planning facility management so these are the various use cases of gis and as i said uh, there are a lot of disciplines where uh, the gis is used so today we will be talking about especially regarding ecology environment forestry and biodiversity and i am going through some of the applications so for example uh, in one of the study it is carried out in the uh, uh, in west bengal uh, where in assam uh, area and uh, it is done for the indian rhinos so you can see it is done in the gurumara national park and chambamari wildlife sanctuary so what they have done is they have actually seen the land use land cover pattern within those uh, different years like 1998 to 2008 2018 and they also predicted what will be the land use land cover pattern in future like 2028 and 2028 using the artificial neural network as well as the linear regression models so using that they are predicting like what will be the future scenario where the new grassland will be established so basically in this uh, particular study the northern region is the gurumara national park and the south part is the changmara wildlife sanctuary and uh, there is a uh, the highways national highways and railways uh, in railway line passing through these uh, areas so this uh, cuz that the northern and southern part is divided so in this case they wanted to like pr uh, propose a pr uh, protected area in this particular area so there will be more protection given to the rhinos so they can actually uh, like move from one area to another area and lot of area which is not under the currently the pro uh, the protected area will be suitable for the rhinos in coming years so that area should be protected uh, in coming years similarly one study is carried out in the nepal region where they have studied the area makau baru uh, national park where they have studied the suitability for uh, black bears as well as the red pandas so basically you can see in the uh, northern region this region is actually the protected area and the southern part is the uh, buffer region so uh, using this uh, they studied the areas which will be suitable for uh, both like the black bear as well as red pandas and those areas which are actually in the buffer zone but not protected by the uh, uh, forestry acts those areas should be protected so the more protection can be given to this uh, two uh, species Uh, then again there are application in case of migration patterns and corridors for example this particular study is carried out in maharashtra uh, mp and chatisgarh area so there are 16 different uh, protected areas for tigers and uh, uh, this study is carried out to see whether they can build a corridor so the tigers can move from one area to the another area so uh, by using the land use land cover pattern human population as well as the transportation like uh, railways and road network they created the resistance area where the tigers uh, should not move on or the area which should be protected which will not uh, hamper the development of human population in that area so by that they have uh, calculate the area which can be protected and can be like uh, used for the uh, building corridors so similarly a study has been carried out for the uh, bird migration so basically the migra uh, the various birds they fly from uh, uh, winter region uh, for, from their breeding season to the south uh, in indian region during the winter and they go back to the north area uh, in uh, uh, asian plateau so these are the various migrations uh, taking place by various uh, 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 birds and actually they are tracking these kind of birds like putting the gps sensors on those birds and uh, tracking their location the routes they are taking for uh, moving from the breeding uh, uh, season to the non breeding season and how they are moving and what will be the areas which should be protected and you can see that there are a lot of uh, birds especially the kites uh, they are like coming to the uh, nearby area which are near to delhi and uh, they can see that there are a lot of problems in that particular area because of the local population so these kind of studies are carried out using gis uh, techniques and not only for the uh, like uh, land uh, migration but also for the ocean migration uh, the gis is used so for example one of the study is carried out uh, for the uh, sea turtle uh, which is the uh, uh, this is a large turtle uh, found in the Uh, ocean uh, pacific ocean uh, the leather uh, uh, turtle so uh, 
in this case they have studied the uh, movement of the turtles uh, in the breeding season so for example they have to uh, find out that these turtles do uh, breed in almost uh, all the seasons but the migration is different depending on their uh, feeding area as well as the nesting uh, uh, area so if the uh, uh, the turtles are nesting in the summer they will migrate to the northern area and they will uh, forage on that particular area in case of uh, winter uh, nesting uh, turtles they will be moving towards the southern area so almost all the part of the ocean is covered during their migration so most of the areas should be protected for the, these uh, uh, vulnerable species so similarly a study has been carried out for the uh, birds uh, this is uh, one of the small bird uh, sea going bird uh, uh, sea uh, water so in this case also they are tracking these birds like almost 19 uh, sheer water species uh, the uh, uh, individuals has been tracked during this uh, study and they are saying that during winter seasons uh, and the breeding season where they are migrating and how they are moving around the world so these kind of studies are possible using gis when they are tracked using uh, gps locations Uh, this is one more study carried out uh, by uh, dna traits so basically they are uh, finding out uh, the origin of the species for example this study is carried out for sea horses almost 21 different species of the sea horses has been studied so they uh, found out that the main origin of the species was near uh, uh, indo australian region and then uh, they moved to the other area so uh, during the Uh, uh almost uh, 7 to 13 million years ago there was a tethys sea and the ocean was open so uh, through this uh, uh, tethys sea the sea horses can move towards the atlantic ocean but uh, eventually that uh, tethys sea has been blocked due to uh, uh, continental drift and that area has been blocked so the is the uh, animals or the species which have moved towards the atlantic ocean they had been cut off from the original uh, uh, locations and they developed in the uh, different species so accordingly they, uh, they have also studied the different types of species and uh, the way they have moved and what are the different causes like for example here there is a uh, uh, the uh, continental drift is uh, like responsible for stopping this uh, migration also they are moving because of the oceanic currents also so these kind of studies are done for like finding out their traits and what are their original locations for those particular species then again this is one of the study carried out for like their origin and how the subspecies have been developed eventually so for example this is one of the reptile uh, snake uh, so this particular snake is found in the california region and you can see that there are different regions uh, which are actually uh, there are a lot of mountain ranges because of that uh, these uh, snakes cannot migrate from one region to another region and because of this uh, uh, stoppage or the barriers uh, they have been developed in the se separate uh, subspecies similar a study has been carried out in uh, nepal region uh, for uh, hanuman langur so you know that there are a lot of uh, big rivers originating in the himalayan region and they are moving to the south and because of that uh, the hanuman langur cannot like move freely from one region to another region and because of that also they are actually developed in the subspecies so these kind of studies are nowadays carried out using satellite images and remote sensing Uh, one more study can be carried out is using uh, remote sensing and gis is creating uh, uh, biodiversity inventories so for uh, this particular study they have actually used a uh, lot of uh, information the satellite data as well as the uh, the data, data set available through various agencies and as well as the field data so using uh, the factors such as ecosystem uniqueness species richness biodiversity value and terrain complexity they have developed the bio, uh, bio, biological richness factors and they have found out the regions which are having very high uh, biodiversity uh, richness and the region which are having low biodiversity richness so these kind of study can be further used for finding out the uh, hotspot so basically we know that we already have four uh, hotspot himalayan region then uh, indo burman regions uh, sundarban region and also the western ghats so these are the hotspots which need to be protected uh, and uh, to conserve the local endangered species 
uh, more uh, studies have been carried out where actually uh, it is possible to study the endangered species and the possible causes for their uh, 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 threats. So, for example, this one is carried out in the Delhi region where actually they track the area from where the various uh, owl species, which are the endangered species, are moving and what are the problems uh, in the area. And uh, also uh, the endangered species like snow leopard has been also tracked by IUCN and the areas which are their habitat. So these kind of studies are possible using uh, GIS. And uh, as I was say, uh, saying, uh, there are a lot of threats in case of uh, uh, this, uh, uh, in case of uh, alien species, uh, there are a lot of species which are not endemic but uh, introduced uh, from the out outer world. So these are the various regions where the, uh, the uh, species are introduced and they are causing a uh, lot of problems uh, in the local area. So many endanger, the uh, endemic species are endangered due to this uh, particular uh, uh, endemic, uh, uh, the invasion of new species. Uh, one more study is carried out uh, to find out the conservation uh, uh, planning done in various area. For example, this is the study carried out in Annamalai National Park in Tamil Nadu. So basically they have studied that uh, after the particular area has been uh, declared as a protected area in 1976 and after that how the, the particular area has been evolved. So you can see from 1972 to 2006 how the particular area has been evolved. So a lot of area which was intact or which was the covered by forest, those has been deforested or degraded during this period. So uh, there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, say, you know, for example, a lot of population, local villagers are depending on uh, these areas. And uh, uh, because of that, uh, even though these areas have been protected, there are a lot of problems. And uh, even after, uh, even after uh, uh, protecting these areas, uh, there is a lot of uh, area has been degraded. Uh, even though there are small areas has been uh, reclaimed and uh, the forest is growing, but uh, comparatively the deforestation or the degradation is more compared to the uh, regrowth of those space, uh, the uh, forest areas. So even after uh, protecting uh, these uh, areas, uh, it's not uh, enough to protect the uh, areas which are vulnerable. Uh, similarly, the studies have been carried out to, uh, for uh, soil and water conservation studies. So using various uh, thematic uh, maps, like for example, stream water, streams, then uh, the slope, then soil texture and land use land cover, it is possible to uh, like locate the areas where the soil and water conservation structures can be built. So these kind of studies are possible using GIS. And for environmental impact assessments also we are using GIS. So basically there are various tools are used at different level. So for example, screening, scoping, there are various GIS tools available uh, for these kind of environmental impact study. I will go through some of the studies now. So this particular study has been carried out uh, 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 for the housing colony in the Lucknow region. So basically uh, before uh, uh, like building these kind of large colonies, uh, we need to find out whether there is any uh, problem or the hazards can be caused due to the construction of these kind of colonies, large colonies. So what kind of constraints or what kind of uh, consideration has to be uh, considered before uh, establishing uh, these kind of colonies are like, for example, there are a lot of natural resources present in this area. So when you are constructing new colonies, uh, there will be uh, like problems in those natural resources. Also, uh, these colonies should not be built in the area which has uh, hazardous uh, zones. Like there may be some area which, uh, where the uh, uh, solid waste has been dumped, or there may be some uh, toxic industries nearby, or there may be a river which may have uh, uh, the area which may be uh, prone to uh, floods. So those areas should be avoided uh, when you are planning these kind of new colonies. And uh, the study find out that a lot of area which has been planned for this particular city is not suitable for constructing new uh, colonies in that particular area. So these kind of studies are possible. 
some more studies of impact assessment are for example this is a study carried out in iran so they have a geothermal area and they are planning to develop new geothermal plants over there so they studied the area and found out that there are a lot of natural resources a lot of uh, habitat uh, is there a lot of uh, populated areas are there and how the construction of geothermal uh, uh, plants in that particular area can affect to the local population and also the local ecosystem so these kind of studies has been carried out also this particular study uh, has been carried out for the zaria coal field in jharkhand area so basically they have studied the effect of uh, air pollutants so basically when there is a uh, coal field there is a lot of air pollutants uh, like so2 no2 and particulate matters has been uh, dispersed in the uh, local area and how those uh, pollutants are affecting to the natural ecosystem as well as the human population so using the landsat images it's possible to study the uh, the areas which having more concentrate uh, concentration of these aerosols again for the air pollution uh, studies uh, these kind of studies is possible like for example they have uh, uh, sensors put in the various location in uh, mumbai region and like bmc niri and mcp uh, mtcb uh, area has been uh, uh, put for the sensors they have put in that particular area and they studied the areas uh, from which those uh, particular emissions are caused and how those uh, uh, various emissions uh, the pollutants like uh, sulfur dioxide nitrous oxide are dispersed within the uh, particular region and how they are causing the uh, problems to the local population and uh, you can also couple the uh, gis models with the uh, uh, air for, uh, dispersion models so for example air mode uh, model has been coupled with the gis uh, gis model and using this they have found out how the dispersion has been done uh, uh, of this particular air pollutants in various region so you can see that uh, the wind uh, actually plays a lot of uh, important uh, role in the dispersion of uh, these air pollutants uh, again you can actually uh, develop models using arc engine uh, where you can actually see if there is a particular source in a particular area and there is a wind flowing in a particular direction so how this particular air pollutant will disperse in that particular area so using the wind models you can actually predict the locations which are like uh, where this air pollutants will move, disperse uh, through the wind uh, then again there are a lot of studies uh, where the uh, it is possible to study the environmental leaks for example in this case uh, it is possible to find out the locations where there are oil spills because oil spills are very uh, dangerous or hazardous to the local ecosystem uh, the natural uh, uh, ocean uh, ecosystems so this particular study is carried out where they have studied the locations where there are a lot of uh, tanker incidents there are a lot of uh, leakage of oil in that particular area and uh, what are those areas and what where the causes of that so these kind of studies and even using the satellite images it's possible to locate the areas which are having the uh, oil spills and then those areas can be protected Uh, this is again one study carried out in chennai region where they have developed the model and they uh, like created a model where they can actually estimate like if there is a uh, leak uh, oil leak in a particular area where that particular oil will move and uh, depending on the like lot of uh, uh, season like seasonal variation also the uh, wind currents all those matters uh, when the uh, oil spill will uh, like move to on the surface of ocean so these kind of models are nowadays built using gis uh, this is one more study carried out uh, uh, to find out the effect of fluoride so uh, there are many uh, regions uh, in india is this particular study is carried out in tamil nadu especially so you know that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, subsurface rocks like fluoride apatite biotite and uh, pyroxene uh, which release these kind of uh, fluoride ions and which cause a lot of uh, problems to the health uh, human health so uh, during various seasons like 
post monsoon and pre monsoon which are the areas which are like uh, more prone to this uh, effect because uh, there are a lot of uh, groundwater ecosystems and groundwater is moving uh, from one region to another from upper uh, reaches to the uh, lower reaches and uh, it takes the fluoride ions with uh, it so uh, because of that uh, there are different areas which are like prone to the fluoride effect uh, pre monsoon and post monsoon so these kind of studies can be carried out using gis uh, again for coastal erosion also it's possible to find out the areas which are more prone to uh, the erosion so uh, these kind of uh, coastal vulnerable indexes can be uh, find out using the ge geomorphology then shoreline changes coastal slopes sea level changes in the particular area and uh, the tidal ranges also so using that it is possible to find out the regions which are more uh, uh, like uh, having high vulnerability the regions which are having low vulnerability and accordingly the areas which are having more uh, vulnerability those kind of, uh, kind of those regions can be protected using the beach management uh, in the local area Uh, this particular study is carried out for the mangroves in the uh, mahanadi river where they have found out like uh, in the mahanadi in from 1972 to 2004 how the particular uh, area has been changed so uh, even though there are a lot of protection given to the mangrove there are a lot of uh, areas like for example you can see the dense mangrove over here has been like uh, 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 taken uh, taken over by the agriculture in the south region which is open mangrove that is taken over by the agricultural land so these kind of uh, areas uh, which are protected by uh, like uh, by uh, for forest act still there are a lot of encroachment due to uh, uh, like growing population and these areas has been like taken over by different land use Uh, we can also use the uh, remote sensing and gis to find out the forest cover so you know that there are a lot of different types of forest uh, present in india and uh, you can actually use the satellite images and ndvi like you know uh, ndvi kind of uh, 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 satellite uh, remote sensing techniques to find out the different types of forest and you can create the uh, the uh, national level as the regional level uh, inventories of vegetation so you can also estimate the deforestation rate also like you can see in this particular study uh, in 2003 to 2004 how the particular area has been deforested so this kind of study uh, can be carried out also you can study the afforestation also like your particular area if it has been protected as i was discussing in earlier also yeah, even after lot of uh, uh, like protected areas and lot of plantation done in particular area lot of area remains uh, deforested so uh, even after lot of in, uh, efforts whether the efforts are taking uh, Uh, in a proper way or not so these kind of studies are also possible using uh, remote sensing and gis and you can also uh, calculate the forest uh, uh, the carbon reserve also because we know that uh, the forest be, uh, are the carbon sink and lot of carbon dioxide has been sequestered using the forest so you can study actually the areas which are like having higher carbon stock and the areas which are having lower carbon stock so these kind of studies are also possible and not only using the satellite images uh, but using the lidar data also you can actually estimate the biomass of particular area and also you can actually estimate the carbon uh, uh, carbon in that particular area so nowadays uh, this carbon stock is also used for uh, carbon markets you know that uh, there are uh, vcs uh, vera carbon stock is there or the gold standards are there vera standards are there and these kind of studies are now done to estimate the carbon market for example if a particular uh, company is protecting this particular area this particular forest has been uh, kept uh, under protection there is no degradation or deforestation in that particular area so that uh, carbon has been sequestered and uh, uh, like uh, stored in that particular area there is no loss of carbon in that particular area because of the uh, the uh, planning or the uh, implementation of areas project in that particular area so those kind of uh, carbon sequestered by those agencies can be actually uh, like uh, 
uh, used for the carbon markets. And then again, you can actually use the satellite images. For example, this particular study has been carried out uh, for uh, using the Sentinel data. Where actually uh, they found out the loss of carbon within, like, from 1990 to 21. How the particular area got deforested because of building of roads and the nearby uh, forest has been degraded and uh, deforested. And because of that, there is a lot of carbon lost uh, during that the development. So these kind of studies are nowadays uh, carried out. And you can also study the carbon flux. You know that there is a lot of uh, forest area which are sequestering the carbon and there are a lot of areas uh, like especially the uh, big cities and metro cities which are actually causing the uh, emission of these uh, uh, various uh, um, greenhouse gases. So these kind of studies can be carried out to find out the regions which are having carbon sinks and the areas which are causing more greenhouse gas emissions. So these kind of studies are possible using GIS and remote sensing. Uh, you can also study the wildfire. So for example, this particular study is carried out using uh, Indian remote sensing satellite AWIPS, uh, and they have found out areas which are uh, uh, like uh, had the uh, the uh, wildfire and lot of uh, natural ecosystem has been uh, lost during that forest fire also it is possible to like find out the areas which will where the forest fire will grow so for example uh, in this particular study you can see that the forest uh, fire was originated in this particular area and slowly it has been uh, dispersed in some other area so southeastern uh, 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 region it grown and you can see that gray area was the actual area and the orange area is the predicted area so it's possible to like simulate these kind of forest fires and how they will grow eventually so these are some applications uh, now i will go through the ISRI products which are used for this kind of study so basically we have uh, uh, we have divided the products basically in three parts like desktop products uh, device uh, independent products and server products uh, the desktop products are the products which are installed uh, in your devices like laptops or uh, computers and then you can use those uh, uh, the app uh, the app softwares uh, there are some applications which don't need any installation like rjs online and some of the uh, applications are there which are can be uh, installed in, on your mobile and even some of the applications are there there is no need of any installation you can directly use web browser uh, sign in using your credential and start using those uh, applications so i will discuss some of the application so as i said uh, this rgs pro is a desktop application which you can install in your desktop or laptop and then you can do a lot of studies like you can create 2d or 3d maps also you can study the temporal variation like uh, within last few years how the particular area has been degraded or deforested so these kind of applications can be possible using the rgs pro uh, then RGS Online is an application which doesn't need any uh, installation. You can, as I said, you can use any web browser. You can directly sign in using credential. And most of the tools which are available in uh, RGS Pro are available in RGS Online also. So you can start uh, using these tools directly without any installation. Uh, also, we have RGIS Enterprise or RGIS Server product uh, where actually you can actually uh, use uh, if there are a lot of users using the same uh, data. So these kind of enterprise products can be used for that purpose. And uh, there are a lot of applications available uh, in RGIS through which you can collect the field level data. So for example, survey one, two, three is there or uh, uh, field map is there by which you can collect the field level data which can be actually directly uh, uploaded on the server for further analysis and you can also develop a lot of infographics using these kind of data sets and uh, rgs is not just a particular type of software as such it's an entire ecosystem and lot of types of data raster data vector data or iot data can be directly imported in the rgs ecosystem and you can do further analysis and actually share this kind of data sets using various infographics you can also develop web applications 
or you can develop your own websites also using uh, these three products. Now I will show some of the live demonstrations. So as I was mentioning, there are a lot of studies carried out uh, using uh, uh, GIS. Uh, so this particular study is carried out to see the migration, uh, fish and eel migration. Uh, so basically, you know that the European eels are like moved from one area to uh, another area during their development stage. So for example, in this uh, study, uh, they have found that particular, uh, the areas where the uh, eggs have been laid and how those uh, eels after development like larvae and adult, how they move uh, uh, in various regions. So after hatching, those uh, uh, eels will start migrating uh, towards northern region, and uh, then they uh, they will go through their life cycle. So these kind of studies are possible, and this particular application is developed in StoryMap. So when you are like uh, doing your studies, actually it's also possible to uh, uh, you provide this kind of information through a lot of infographic dashboard and story maps and it's very easy to convey to the audience if you use these kind of infographics so you can actually show various uh, infographics like uh, videos and images and lot of stories also can be created using the story maps so you can also show various uh, uh, barriers for example there are a lot of barriers in uh, these regions which actually uh, stop migration of these particular eels so this kind of study, it's possible. For example, uh, th in Thames region, there are a lot of uh, various barriers has been created. So you can see in this particular map, because of these barriers, uh, those eels or the local fishes, they cannot move in upstream regions. So these kind of studies are possible and you can also create uh, story maps and dashboards using the GIS applications. So this particular application, you can see uh, I have shown in uh, this particular tab. So for example, if uh, there are uh, barriers in this particular area, so after, because of these barriers, uh, the uh, fishes or the eels cannot uh, move to the upstream regions. So for example, these are the green regions up to which those eels or the fishes can migrate. But after, because of the uh, creating of the barriers, they cannot move upstream. So these kind of studies are possible uh, using GIS. And you can create these kind of dashboards or the story maps and convey this kind of information to the audience. Also, there are a lot of studies, like for example, this kind of, this uh, study is carried out for the horn uh, uh, animal, which is like a kind of a deer. So they have studied how those uh, these uh, uh, animals move uh, in various uh, regions, and what are the different seasons and what are the, their location during those seasons. These kind of studies and uh, are carried out, and can actually track them and also uh, show their uh, movement, uh, their uh, movement during various seasons also. So these kind of websites or story maps uh, can be developed, which will be easier to like uh, discuss this or convey this information to the audience. So similar uh, story map has been developed for the Auckland uh, Council in New Zealand. So uh, for example, uh, they carried out this study uh, in. Uh, they are protected area and as I discussed, there are a lot of uh, areas uh, which need to be protected and when they need to uh, like develop the areas uh, where they should be connected within uh, uh, very protected areas. So what uh, the base uh, sites for those uh, areas that can be found out using the GIS. So uh, as I said, the, the least cost analysis has been done for this area. So there are various protected areas. Uh, and uh, if you need to connect those areas, which are the areas which should be developed or uh, protected. So the migration of those uh, animals, local animals is possible from one area to another area through various corridors. So these kind of uh, uh, studies are being carried out. And also it's possible to show these kind of studies 
through various infographics to the audience. Uh, so this is particular kind of uh, to find out the uh, like migration of various uh, birds. So this particular portal has been developed uh, using ECD product, and you can see the migration pattern of uh, this long-tailed jackal uh, in various seasons. So uh, the uh, this particular uh, bird, uh, sea-going bird, they, they, that bird like move from one area to another area in various seasons uh, in various months so these kind of birds are being tracked using gps and uh, then you can track and also animate that migration using gis so there are a lot of birds which has been tracked uh, using this uh, uh, gps technique and then uh, they have developed the portal to see how their migrations are there in different areas And you can also use the satellite images to see the development or the uh, changes in land use land cover. So you can use these uh, particular applications to see the uh, changes in the areas. For example, I am showing the satellite images uh, for uh, 2016 and on the, the satellite images for the so how the changes has been take, uh, took place in that particular area so this is particular area as i discussed uh, regarding mahanadi delta so how the area has changed from uh, 2016 to 2021 20, uh, so these kind of studies are possible and these uh, images this uh, high resolution satellite images are directly available uh, in history product you can directly import these uh, images which are not freely available, you can directly import in your RGIS uh, products like RGIS Pro or RGIS uh, online and then do your further study. Uh, I thank all the audience once again uh, for taking their time out and uh, attending this uh, uh, session on uh, how to achieve a healthy balance between humans and nature through GIS technologies. Post this webinar, we'll uh, you'll also get a feedback form. We would love to hear the feedback from you. If you have any queries, you can reach out to our uh, speaker. Uh, his credentials are displayed on the screen. So any queries or anything uh, related to your colleges or courses, you can contact us anytime. So I thank you once again. I thank uh, Yogesh for delivering uh, insightful webinar. Thank you, everyone.